Good morning. God bless everyone this morning. As we listen to the word of God, may the Lord just speak to our hearts. We can't be here together physically, but we can both spiritually and mentally. I know several are watching and listening by internet. And we're thankful that we have this medium by which we are able to connect with you all. I believe that the technology that we now have is for this purpose. And we are able to connect through phone calls, texting, WhatsApps, see each other while we're talking. Facebook is also a means. We thank God for these things that we have available to us. I've tried to contact all of you or leave a message or something. I understand that most of you are still working. You still have your jobs or you have been doing something else to provide income. Although many people have been laid off their jobs throughout the state of California and the nation, many are still working, providing the necessary services to the public. I just want to make one thing clear, and that is that this is, that we are going through, the nation and the world, is not a squeeze or boycott that Brother Branham told us would come. What's happening has nothing to do with our believing this message. And I know no matter how many times we say that, some people will still believe that. That's, that's fine. That's okay. People have different views, and we must be tolerant with one another. The main thing is not to get into debates and fusses and stews over what's happening. But this has nothing to do with what we believe. The boycott will come, but this is not that. This is a health crisis, and people are getting sick, and they are dying, and not only the elderly, but also the middle-aged, and even young people. So this invisible enemy has no regard for age. It will attack anyone and make them very sick and even take their life. So, as they have said, this flu is three times more powerful than the regular flu. And so we have been advised by the medical experts to stay indoors as much as possible. And if you have to leave the house, may it be only for groceries or pharmaceutical needs. Let's follow all the guidelines and be safe and believe that we can get through this and once again be united together as a small body of believers. I know that there can be a lot of anxiety and stress and tension amongst you. Staying indoors all day can, can do that. I feel that myself. But they say you can go for small walks, you know, go outside in the backyard, exercise a little in your homes, walk your pets outside. But stay indoors for the most part and wash your hands and face and keep a safe distance. And the God of heaven shall be with you and protect you during this time. That's a promise. I have the burden of the word of God. And so I have to continue declaring the message of the hour. There is no other message like ours suited for the time that we are living in, that we are experiencing. We have a prophet that told us these things would take place. We have read to you several statements of Brother Branham that said these viruses would come, and they have been coming, and this is the worst one thus far. Now I want to say that Many 
thought that this would happen during the Great Tribulation. I kind of had my thoughts about that too. And, and not while the bride is still on the earth. However, we see that the bride is still here. And these plagues are now falling on the entire globe. But since the bride has been spiritually, supernaturally raptured in her soul and has been raised up into heavenly places, she is in a place that the Bible calls Goshen. Goshen. Just before the plagues fell, Israel went to Goshen. And while the plagues and diseases and famine and death was striking Egypt, God's people were safe in Goshen. So is it today. We must not fear. Remind ourselves that as the scripture says in Isaiah 59, 19, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So we must trust in the Lord God. Now, let us change the order of the service and take our special needs before the Lord. I have a couple of requests here that I'd like to read to you. First one reads, Sister Maggie Ask us to remember Julian, her brother-in-law, in prayer. As they don't expect him to live much longer. Also, please remember Sister Bolin in Arizona. That's uh, Sister Flora. Sharon. Sharon Bolin. Thank you, Brother Fred. Sorry about that. Uh, Sharon Bolin. Let me read it again. Please remember Sister Sharon Bolin in Arizona. She just lost her brother-in-law, Ron. Remember the family, Brother Fred. If you have a dire or special need for yourself or for someone else, your neighbor, just hold your heart over your and, and place it, that special need, on the golden altar of intercession where the perfect sacrifice is laying as a memorial for our atonement, for both soul and body. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you boldly into the throne room where the blood is interceding for us and plead for mercy and grace for each other and every need that's upon the hearts of your people this morning. May you grant it for your people. We ask that you please remember Sister Sharon Boland's brother-in-law, Ron, They just lost their loved one. We pray for the family. Lord, we just hope that his soul was fine with you, God, that all was well with him spiritually and that he is resting in peace with you. But we pray for the family left behind, that you would grant them comfort and strength during this time of bereavement for their family. Help them, Lord Jesus. And we ask for Sister Maggie's brother-in-law, Julian. We ask, Father, for him. They don't expect him to live much longer. We don't. I don't know the condition of his soul, Lord. But you know all things. And we pray, Lord God, that his soul would be right with you. 
that he would be ready and prepared to go for. That's what life is all about. It's preparing ourselves to leave this earthly journey when our time comes. So we pray for his soul, God. And we pray for his body. Lord, that if you would do a miracle, for you are able, Lord. Nothing is too hard for you. You are still in the business of working miracles, Lord, and raising people up in this day. So we present him to you. We present Julian to you. Lord, may you have your perfect way in his life and help the family during this time. Strengthen them. Comfort them, Lord, by your word and your presence. Lord, for all the needs, we confess all our sins and we plead for not justice, but mercy, O oh God. Have mercy upon all of us, our loved ones. We ask you for them. Keep them safe and protected, O oh God. And convict their hearts during this time. And may they see that this is an opportunity to receive your love and grace in their lives. May we all humble ourselves and turn to you with all our hearts. Because your word tells us if my people that are called by my name shall turn from their wicked ways and call upon me and humble themselves, I will hear their cry, and I will heal their land. Lord, that's a promise. Lord, we want to turn away from our wickedness, from our evil ways, from our carnal thinking, Lord. We want to leave those things behind and put all our confidence and trust in your promises and in your word. We ask it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now bless thy word to our hearts that we may see thy loving kindness. Amen. Now I want to read from the book of Psalm. From the book of Psalm, a very powerful and comforting psalm in the time of need and stress and anxiety. It would do the whole world good to read this psalm. Psalm 91. Read along with me. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. We're beginning with the first verse once again. Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth. Shalt thou trust, and his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Let's read for verse 4 again. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, 
but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Let's read verse 10 again. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen to the word of God. Oh, we love it, don't we? Amen. We just so appreciate it. It's, it's our first love is the word of God. And we are so thankful and appreciative to the Lord Jesus Christ that he always provides a way for us. He makes a way for us. Amen. And so we continue to believe him and, and trust him and, and draw closer to him. Now, I want to read this scripture again. The first verse, because that's what I want to preach on is the first verse. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now this scripture alone could be preached on for hours the secret place of the Most High. That's what we'll call it this morning. The secret place of the Most High. I remember that a game that we used to play called Hide and Go Seek. When I was a little kid, all the neighbor kids used to play this exciting game it was a lot of fun, very entertaining for us. And everyone would find himself a place to hide, and one person would, would, was chosen to go and find everyone that was hiding. That was the purpose of the game, to hide so you couldn't be found. Well, God has a secret place where he hides. The Bible says that I am the God that hideth myself. God hides himself and then he reveals himself in simplicity. He hides himself from those that are trying to find him intellectually and he reveals himself to those that are humble and realize that it takes more than an intellectual conception or an intellectual experience to find God, to know God, to know his word. Now watch, I, I want us to see how the scriptures dovetail from the Old Testament to the New Testament. 
And you'll see that streak of Calvary's blood running through all the scripture from Genesis to the book of Revelations. There's 66 books in the Bible. And there's 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah that we read from. So it's a perfect book. There are over 2 million books published each year because this is the era of information. But yet the Bible remains the world's number one bestseller. Now, let's turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men. Alms is what you give, whether it's... Food or whether it's money or whatever you give, your gifts, whatever that you're giving. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou dost alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, now here's what I want to get to, verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, Enter into thy closet. See Isaiah 91 verse 1. How it all just dovetails and and connects from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The words of Isaiah and the words of Jesus. When thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. For, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So, giving and praying, you know, it's it's all to be done in secret. We know we, we pray here openly. We pray here from the pulpit. We pray for our needs openly. We, we pray in groups. We come to the altar we collect an uh, offering because the prophet of God said that your service really is not a religious service unless you collect an offering because our sacrifice, our worship, our giving is part of our worship. And so we do what the prophet says because that's what the Bible says to do. That's part of our worship is giving. And so, giving and praying, it's all to be done in secret. 
not in the open. The, the Pharisees were doing just that. They sought the glory of men and the praises of men. So here, here is where people got the saying, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doth. See, it all goes back to Scripture. Now, it's important to say this, that when Brother Branham was speaking about the third pool, the angel told him it would not be a public show. He said, the angel said to him, you made a public show of the first and second pools. And it caused a lot of carnal impersonations. But this will not be known to the public. See, it's just like our personal prayers. It's done in the secret place. In the secret place of the Most High. Not in our church services. We have prayers in church services. We do certain things in, the, in our church services openly. But your personal, intimate prayers, as you commune with God one-on-one, -on -one, the Bible tells us that it's to be done privately, in a secret place. And Brother Branham connected it with his third pull. Now, I want to read from a message, what is a vision? What is a vision? Preached in April the 8th, 1956. Now, remember that those of you that know the message, you study the message and, and you've heard these things for years, see? Brother Benham talked, you know, about the shoestring and the fishing pole. You know how you, the angel told him you can't teach Pentecostal babies supernatural things. You all remember that. When he reached down to pick up the shoestring, it changed into a fishing pole. Uh, how this shoestring, it, it, was, it was laced down to a nice eighth of an inch so it would go through the hole because he couldn't get it through the hole. The angel told him, pick up the other end, and it was, it was bound. So it would go through those little eyelets. Well, when he reached down to pick up the string, it changed into a fishing pole, and he found himself fishing by the side of a big, beautiful lake. And there were other fishermen catching small fish. And he looked out into the lake and saw those great, big, beautiful rainbow trout out there. And he said down in his heart, I know I can catch those. That's when he reached down to pick up the string or the, the shoelace and it turned into a, a fishing pole. Then the angel behind him said, now I'll teach you how to fish. And he told him to tie or snap on the lure and cast way out as far as the line could go, way out into the deep here now, let, let me read from the message, what is a vision? What is a vision? Brother Branham preached it April the 8th, 1956. He says, 
Now I'll teach you how to fish. This is the angel talking to him. How to catch those. And he said, tie on the lure. And I snapped on the lure. Now throw way out. Now listen close. Way out into the deep. And he said, when you do, let the lure sink down first. Then pull it slow. Now that's really fisherman's technique. He said, then when you do, now you'll feel some nibble, but don't tell nobody that you're doing what you're doing. Keep it to yourself and said, when you feel it nibble again, pull it just a little bit, but not too hard. He said, then it'll pull it away from the little fish. And when they scatter, the, the little fish would scatter. That's exactly what's happened. The little fish have scattered. People have scattered. Some have gone this way, that way, different ways, different ideas. They didn't, see, they didn't stay for the main attraction. They scattered. Now he says, it'll pull away from the little fish, and when they scatter, that'll attract the attention of the big fish. And they'll grab it. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? That you grabbed it? <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. The others scattered. They went this way and that away. But these big fish, they grabbed it. That's the way you'll catch it. The angel's telling him, that's the way you'll catch it said, when they bite on the third time, set your hook for the catch. I said, I understand. Said, but keep still. Don't tell nobody. Keep still. And I said, all right. I had the lure in my hand, and all these fishermen turned out to be ministers. They turned out to be ministers. And they all come around saying, Brother Branham, I know you can catch fish. Oh, of course. That made me feel real good. I said, oh, yes, I'm a fisherman. I can catch fish. Now, and he said, now here is the way you do it. And I said, you throw it way out. And I went way out to the deep water. Now those little fish are fine, brethren. But we want the big ones too. <laughs> Amen. Brother, there's your, your foolish virgin and your wise virgin. <laughs> it's so plain. It's, it's right there for the believer when you read between the lines. Amen. Right there. There's your separation, both big ones and little ones. Because every revival produces twins, wise virgin and foolish virgin. The wise grab the revelation. They catch that revelation. Amen. But we want the big ones too. And I said, see, when it sinks down, now, see, there it is, just about where it should be. Now, see where they, there, them is little fish. Now, when they stretch again here, I give it a great big jerk. And when I did, I pulled the whole lure out of the water. And when I did, I caught a fish. But I wondered how he ever got the lure in his mouth. Because it looked like the skin stretched over the lure, about the same size of the lure. And I thought, oh, my. And just then, this one who had been talking behind me, stepped around in front of me. It was him, the angel of the Lord. He had his hands folded. He looked at me. He had a stern look on him. He said, just what I told you not to do. And I said, yes, that's right. 
He said, you see that first pole was when you used to put your hands on the people and tell them what was their trouble. The second pole was when you know the secrets of the heart like I told you. And said, instead of you keeping that to yourself, you tried to explain all about it and tell people. And when you did, you didn't know nothing about it yourself. And how could you explain it? And you've caused a big bunch of carnal impersonations to rise up and see what you've done. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. And I, I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do. And I was pulling the line like this. And I was trying to straighten my line out. He looked at me, said, now don't get your line tangled up in these kind of times. You know, that would be good for us. Don't get our lines tangled up in these kind of times. The line, see, that, that's the word. Don't, don't let anybody tangle it up for you. Amen. Just stay with that word. Stay with it. Don't get all tangled up with these false teachings and false doctrines, erroneous teachings that lure you over here and lure you over there and take you over here and take you over there. With every wind of doctrine. Don't get your line tangled up. Stay right on that word. I thought maybe. Then he goes on and he says, I thought maybe he's going to give me another try. And I said, I'll sure be careful. And was winding my line in, seeing it taken up all right. And then when he said that, just then I felt myself go higher, way up. See, he, he, he went from the, the shoestring, the Pentecostal shoe. You can't teach Pentecostal babies supernatural things. He went from there to a higher dimension to a, a, a lake where he was fishing. Now, you'll find this account also in the seal book in the seventh seal. You read that seventh seal today. Read it, and it's right along with this message. What is a vision? The seal of the seventh seal which was preached in 1963, the last of the seals. We preached it Sunday evening. And he speaks about the shoe, and he speaks about the lake. He speaks about the cathedral, a tent. It's there in the seventh seal. And I'm reading it out of here. What is a vision? So you can read them and make the connection. Now, now he says... When I was set down, then I was beneath and standing above a great tent. I never seen such a tent. And I had just made an altar call. I had just made an altar call. Now, Brother Benham says in another message, he says, I had just finished preaching. I had just finished preaching because some of us said that Brother Branham was never seen preaching in the tent, in the vision. But he says, he says so himself. I had just finished preaching. Then he, he makes an altar call. I had just made an altar call, seeming like down at the altar. And when I was down there, I looked and there was hundreds of people standing around the altar weeping because they had accepted the Lord Jesus and they were just weeping out loud and I said oh that's more like it like that And a real kind gentleman walked out to the platform and said, well, Brother Branham is resting. While he's resting in just a few moments, we'll call the prayer line. And said, everyone with cards, prayer cards beginning with a certain number, stand over on the right. Well, I noticed the prayer line. It seemed like it went all around the tent. 
and out and down the street. Such a prayer line. And I looked over, which was with, then to my left, and that would be to my right. If I was standing on the platform, would be that way. There's a piece of canvas stretched there, and in behind this canvas was a little square building, and about 12 foot across and 20 feet long, 20 foot long, something like that. Well, I stood and looked at that, and I seen them bringing a the lady up on a stretcher and there was a lady there taking her name and things with a uh, on a paper and so there's someone come and got her and pushed her through and the next man come through was with crutches I seen them go through that little building and on the outside the lady come out screaming to the top of her voice pushing this stretcher then there was another lady on the other side, looked like kind of a dark-haired woman, and she said, what happened? She said, I just don't know. She said, I couldn't tell you what happened. She said, I've been paralyzed for 20 years, and look, I, I feel like I never was sick. And just then out come the man, leaping and jumping with his crutches in his hand. And I looked at that. Now here is something. Now listen close. There's a difference between the angel of the Lord and that light. Because I heard something a moving as it does when it comes here at the platform at night. Kind of a. <laughs> and like a fire whipping around, licking blaze. And it left me and it went right over the top of that audience. And went and stood over the top of that little building. And then settled down on the top of it. And then when it did, this one that was standing by me behind me the same voice the angel's voice he said I'll meet you in there and this is the third pull but nobody will know nothing about it and I said well I don't understand why in there why there he said it will not be a public show this time and I said, I don't understand going into that closet like that. And he said, is it not written by our Lord? When thou prayest, be not like the hypocrites who like to be heard before men, but enter into the secret closet and pray to the Father who seeth in secret, and he who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. It's perfectly to the scripture. Every time it is. And I said, I understand. Then he took me to this place. And he set me down in this room where I was at. And then he told me what to do for the third time. Now, Christian friends, that will, when I leave this world, that will still be in my bosom. When I, But you mark my words, what's going to take place? Mark my words, what's going to take place? He said, in another place, he said, write it in the fly leaf of your Bible. Just like the little boy in Finland. Amen. See, we're just reading what he said without interpreting anything. Just he interpreted it. He, he, he's the one that's telling us. We're just saying what he said, reading what he said, because we are responsible to the people for that, because this is our hope. This is our future. This is our destiny. This will take us to our eternal destination. To follow up on this 
He says here, the Lord is fixing to visit his people in a great marvelous something, friends. It has to be a secret in mine own heart. But as you know me and you believe me and love me and respect me as God's servant, just remember I'm telling you a blessing is on the road. That's right, a coming. And it will not be weakening. It will never weaken me no more. And it will be far beyond anything that's ever happened here or anywhere else. It's just something the Lord has given. Brother Bradham says here, and I believe that America is going to get her last call this year. Remember from 1946 to 1956, the world was receiving the greatest ministry that has ever struck the face of the earth since the days of Jesus Christ. From 1946, when he, Brother Branham received his commission from an angel, a man, it commissioned him. From 46 to 56, great revivals, great campaigns, worldwide, seven times around the world. And he says this, in 1956, and what is a vision? And I believe that America is going to get her last call this year, right? It'd be Darenst. Look here at the tapes down here. They might be played 20 years from today. It's been 50 years now, 55 years, and we're still playing the tapes. We're playing the tapes. And he said back then that the bride is called and already sealed. Already in, already sealed. There's, there's names on the Lamb's Book of Life that you, yet were not born yet. We were not born. But, but the generation that sees Israel go back to the homeland, a, a generation would be like 70 years. 70 years. That's the lifespan of a man. That's the average lifespan of a, 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 a man. Is, Three score and ten years. That's 70 years. It's also considered a generation. This generation shall not pass. I would be in that generation. I was born in 1942. 48, Israel became a nation. In 46, the angel commissioned Brother Branham with the healing ministry after Israel had become a, a nation. Behold the fig tree when its branch is yet tender. See? Those things. Bible prophecy. He says, look at the tapes. They may be played 20 years from today. Have to watch what you're talking about. Watch what you're saying. But I believe that. Now the Lord hasn't told me that. But I believe that. That America is either going to receive Christ or is going to turn him down. Flatly this year. And I predict that they will turn him down. Well, we, we see the condition of the world. We, we know that that has happened. First thing you know, they'll try to stop all of this. They'll try to quit praying for the sick. And put a band on it. And just remember that when persecution rises, the church, it comes to its very height then. It's always the best. Yes, sir. And God is working it all together. Oh, I love that, don't you? They'll try to quit praying for the sick and put a band on it. And just remember that when the persecution arises, the church comes to its very height because God always raises up a standard against the enemy. God, we see the foundation of our nation crumbling because of the rejecting of the gospel. While great men have swept this nation, combed through every place, the gospel messages went forth 
the spirit like John the Baptist, not doing miracles or saying anything about miracles, but swept the nation over. That would be under Billy Graham's ministry. Then the miracle working power of Jesus followed it as it did John. And still our nation, whiskey, Tabasco, nightclub, sin, hippie on every side. Our great civilization is falling, falling. Everything must give away. All these kingdoms must fall that the kingdom of God might be issued in its brightness and the great millennium come into place. Now, I want to read here. It's still early. I want to read here in a message that Brother Branham preached called Testimony. Testimony, and it was preached in 63. November 28, 1963, at Life Tabernacle. He says this now. This is close now. He says in page four, he says, I'd like to get a place sometime, the Lord willing, when a tent comes on the scene. When a tent comes on the scene. And I believe that's soon now. Soon. I'm going worldwide. I got a worldwide meeting coming now. And I'd like to get a place where I could sit down for about six weeks and just take those things and go through them. You see, back and forth through the scriptures. And it's astounding to see the hour that we're living in. It frightens me. It frightens me. Here's a prophet. Because he can see all these judgments coming. He could see them back then. He didn't know when. He didn't know would would come to this point right here. I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. I don't know that. Maybe he did. But he said that he predicted the coming of the Lord. He didn't prophesy and say it's thus saith the Lord, but he had a prediction. But he didn't know exactly when. And so he says, it's astounding to me. It frightens me, not because in my heart the joy bells are ringing, knowing that the coming of the Lord is so close at hand. But what frightens me is to know that so many is unprepared for the hour that we are facing. That's the bad part. That's the bad part, and it shakes all of us. Our joy, our hearts should be full of joy and, and, and we are are glad because we have waited for these promises for God to fulfill his word to come for his church but at the same time there's a there's a, a, a frightening sense because people are not ready family members are not ready they laugh at these things they they have no conviction anymore because God's spirit is lifting up because the, the country has been combed over with evangelists proclaiming the gospel with the Billy Graham for many, many decades preaching the gospel of justification. And Oral Roberts to the Pentecostals, Billy Graham to the nominal, the evangelicals. Oral Roberts to the Pentecostals and many, many evangelists, many, many. And they preached the gospel and they, they passed on. And now we have a bunch of modern televangelists. Now we have a bunch of modern preachers. Now we have a bunch of high breeders, high breeding the word of God misinterpreting it to the people, misplacing, mislocating the scriptures. 
saying it means this and it doesn't mean that. When we're just to say what the prophet of God said and let God interpret his own word. Give that to the people and don't say this is what it means because that's interpreting. The word of God is of no private interpretation. It's our responsibility to read what the prophet of God has said and believe it even if we don't understand it and let God do the interpreting by bringing it to pass. I know that's everybody's desire. That's what we really want. That's what the inner man wants. He doesn't want to be deceived. He doesn't want to go off into error. He wants to stay on the word, stay behind the word. Everybody says that. Everybody preaches that. But not everybody is doing that. Everybody's listening to the tapes, reading the books, but not everybody is doing what the tapes say. They're not doing what the word says. This is what he says now. That's the bad part. Unprepared for the hour that we are facing. How many ever heard the story about the squirrels up there that time? Many. Oh, of course, I guess everywhere a little something like that happened the other day. And you have heard the story about the mountains coming down when the Lord wrote those things on the mountains the other day. I'm not a preacher. Anybody knows that. I'm not a preacher, but it's made up in a spiritual form of watching things and seeing things move for warning people of things that's coming to pass. And it's just that my makeup, it's just that's my makeup. I can't help that no more than you can help your makeup. But God has put us, each one in the body, to do certain things. And I watch every little move. Every objective, every motive, because everything is governed by spirit. This church was put here for a purpose. There is a spirit behind this church, certainly spirit behind your home, behind every building, behind everything. There is a spirit, motive, and objective. This church comes here to greatly exalt. If this church comes here to, this church comes here to greatly exalt some human system or something, then its motives is not right. But if it's put here to try to achieve something for the kingdom of God, then the motive and objective both is right if the motives is directed that way. He says, now I've been thinking since the ministry and the first and second and third phase of the ministry. When I first come to Shreveport, I told you people that the Lord, you would lay your hands up like upon my hand. It would signify the same. And the Holy Spirit never failed one time, but what told you exactly what was wrong with you. I told you then that. He told me that day there would be a time that when you know the very secret of the heart, not knowing that the word says that will be. I didn't know that, but the word does that. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Now that word, you see, you must never leave that word. You must stay exactly with that word. The way it's written. Don't put no private interpretation to it. Just say it just the way it's written. That's our responsibility. That's what we're trying to do. How could I criticize anybody for reading the quotes on the tent vision? How could I criticize any minister, any minister, any person for believing in a literal tent? Why would I do that when it's there in the message, when the, the statement, the quotes are just as good as any of the other quotes? They're just as powerful. They're just as good. And, and reliable. As any other statements. Of Brother Branham. 
just preach it like it is. Why would I want to try to interpret it? Why would I want to spiritualize it and say it's all spiritual and explain it away? It can be explained away. Yes, it, it, they have tried to spiritualize it and have caused many to go into error, to fall by the wayside, to enter into false doctrine, false teaching. It's better to just read the statements, read the quotes, and not try to put our own private interpretation to it and try to explain it away, that it means this, the tent means this, the little room means this, when Brother Branham put $100,000 towards the tent. He said, just to let you know that I know what I'm talking about, I'm putting $100,000 towards this tent. And he talked about outhouses and, and trailers and trucks. So how can you spiritualize that? Why would you criticize anybody, any minister, any person that took a stand for these statements, these quotes on the tent on the third pole? When he said it would not be impersonated, they'd cause carnal impersonations. That's what they have done, cause carnal impersonations of this third pole. They cause it by interpreting, by saying it means this. It means this over here. It's, it's spiritual. It, it already happened. It happened in Brother Branham's ministry. Or we are the tent. We're the tent. Or Brother Branham was the tent. He was going from place to place. See, that's, that's not what the message teaches us. That has no foundation in the word of God. How is Moses and Elijah, how are they going to fulfill their three and a half year ministry? They have three and a half years of ministry. They'll be smiting the earth with plagues and famine and pestilences and preaching the gospel to the Jews, the 144,000. How are they going to, how are they going to get here? How is Moses and Elijah going to do that? They've been gone for many, many years. Hundreds, thousands of years. How, how are they going to come back? In Revelations 11, the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, they've been dead all this time. Dead for many years. They say, well, Brother Branham's dead. See, if, they, if he was alive right here in person with us physically, they wouldn't be questioning. None of us would be questioning the third pole. Nobody. But because he's not here, they know there's things that are left that are undone. There's things left that are undone by these two witnesses. How are they going to do it? They're not here. Certain things has to happen. Certain things has to be fulfilled. The gospel's got to go back to the Jews as the gospel came to the Gentiles, through the Apostle Paul, who was a Jew, the Jew brought it to the Gentile. A Gentile will take it back to the Jews, to the witnesses. The Son of Man shall send forth his angel, Moses and Elijah, and commission them to get the 144,000. That you're seeing there in Mount Transfiguration. See, it's not just believing that God sent a prophet. That's not what this message is all about. Just to believe that God sent a prophet, the devil believes. And he trembles and he's going to hell. But that's not enough. It's to be saved and to be restored. It's to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to be filled with revelation, to, to catch that open door and not be a foolish virgin, but be a wise virgin because the foolish virgin is one day going to wake up and say, maybe we've been wrong about all this. Maybe what you guys have been teaching and propagating and believing that we call fanaticism, maybe you are right. Because they haven't been able to produce this third pole. It will not be impersonated. They can't, they can't, it can't be duplicated. 
That's why they're, they're getting nervous because they know they can't do it. And they're getting anxious and they're going to have to give an account to their people. They're going to have to give account for their ministry. They're going to have to tell them why you guys said you had the third pole. Where is it? Because see, we are benefactors of the third pole. Recipients. But it comes according to God's channel. The Lord God shall do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. There's going to be a time when the foolish virgin, according to the message, will go to the wise. Give us of your oil. You guys have been right. We've been wrong. We admit it. Can we have that some oil? Tell us more about this. And the wise will say to the foolish, go and pray up. You have to buy it for yourselves. Get it yourself. And while they went to get it, the bridegroom came. And the bride went in and the door was shut. That's going to happen here on the earth, my friends. See, now, I'm, I'm closing now. But I, I want to uh, continue this evening. I will, I'll be back, the Lord willing, at 5 o'clock this evening. And uh, I'll be here at this place. My post of duty. So I uh, welcome you to come back this evening again to hear these things. These things that the prophet told us about. And so we, we know how to stand. The bride, the bride knows how to stand. She's very, 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 very few, Brother Brown says. See, but now just, just one of the few. I want to be one of the few. I want us to make it. I want us to be there. Now, th these things are, are real, brothers and sisters. They're, they're true. We, we believe them. We'll, we'll, we'll die for them. Some of us may have to give our lives. We have to be prepared to do that when it really comes to a place where the press comes. But see, we're, this life is to prepare for the life that is to come. We must not fear. We must not panic. We must not be nervous. If we do, go to your hiding place. Go in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow of His presence. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. There's nothing to be anxious about. If you're, if you're right with God, if you're right with God, check up. Bring your family together. Bring your children. Seek God. This is the hour. This is the time. I have to finish this, brothers and sisters. Because we don't know how many more services we will have before the boycott does come. I don't know when it's going to come, but it's going to come. This could be a catalyst to it. I don't know, but we'll see. It's a day-by-day -day thing. See, now, so, uh, I want to finish reading here what the prophet of God tells us. He says, like, Why are people so tossed about? Page 53. I've been going an hour and 15 minutes, but that included the introduction and that included the prayer requests and so forth. So I, actually, I took about 15 minutes for that, so I've been going an hour, so I'm going to go a little longer than an hour, but not too much longer. Now, Why are people so tossed about? I love the title of these 
these messages. Why are people so tossed about? Page 6, paragraph 53. This is what he says. He's talking about the, the third pole again. He says, again, he says, he says, you know, he tells him how he, he made that, that uh, first and second pole. He made it a public show of it, and he got a lot of impersonation, a lot of copycats. A lot of different ministers uh, came on the evangelistic field and so forth. And and they made a, an impersonation of those things, of those first two poles. Then he's talking about the third pole. He says, and why are people so tossed about? He says, i seen a great huge tent. i never seen such a tent. It was packed and lined everywhere with people, and I walked out. I was standing above the people looking down where I just made an altar call. And hundreds and hundreds of people were weeping and rejoicing after they had accepted the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And then I heard a man get up and say, call the prayer line. And people began to line up over on this side and the left from where I was looking down towards the platform. And they lined all the way up and down the street for a prayer line. I noticed to my left, which would have been to my right, if I was on the platform, a little wooden building. And I've seen that light that they have the picture of, you know. It's always in the meeting. I've seen that light. Leave me and go to that building. Go in that building. And a boy said to me, I'll meet you in there. That'll be the third pole. I said, why? He said, well, it won't be a public show like the other. And many of you know that just before leaving on the other crusade, about eight or ten years, I think around ten years since, well, nine years, these things were told exactly how the auditorium services. You remember exactly how that Brother Lawton would live exactly three years and then be taken away. Then Brother Ward would build a tabernacle down in this position, this direction here, and all just exactly, you know it, you old timers. It happened just that way. And so will this. Listen. For it's thus saith the Lord. It's thus saith the Lord. The tent is thus saith the Lord. You can read that. You can read it out there in internet land. Whoever's listening, you read it. Why are people so tossed about? It's thus saith the Lord. And you'll know it. And you'll know it. You'll know it. And now I believe that at the brink of the greatest meanings that's ever, I've ever held for the Lord Jesus is laying right in the future before me now. Oh, praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, saints of God, God has given us a ministry here in this little church here of ours, our little group of people, not many of us. Many have come and gone. Many have seen fit not to stay. Some have left because of these very things that we preach. Several have left because of the things that we teach and we, because of, we believe in a literal tent. We believe that that prophet has the third pole. He's coming back to exercise it just like Moses and Elijah are going to come back. God's going to put them here. The seventh seal will bring him back to earth. The rest will be known at the time that Jesus appears here on earth. Or whatever takes place at that time, we know it's not a literal corporal body. The denominations have always looked for a corporal body. But God has done something supernatural, something mysterious under the seventh seal. It's only to the elect that they will come under the message of the rapture. And will unite with the bridegroom here on the earth. It will be an invisible union of the bride and the bridegroom. God has given us a ministry and we must be faithful to that third pole 
and teach it exactly the way our prophet taught it, without interpreting it. Let God do the interpreting. The rapture will be the rapture will be supernatural. It'll be done in secret. No one, the outside world, will not know nothing about it. The true bride will not even be missed. She'll be taken away. The catching away will be invisible to the rest of the world. They won't see it. Amen. God bless you. We'll just continue on this evening. I, I, I have more material than I have time. But the Lord help us to just stay humble and just believe his word and trust in him because he is the one. He is the one that we look to. We look away to Jesus. And Brother Branham said, I, the thing that we have looked to so for so long, the thing, the, the third pole is here. I must not say anything about it. He said, but you know what to look for. Amen. You know where it's at. He says, it's within me now. I'm just waiting for the hour to use it. But it will be used. Waiting for the council of churches to tighten up. Bring down that squeeze. Then what you've seen temporarily will be used in the fullness of its power. Lord, help us to believe all the word. Lord, not just to take these statements of the prophet and sweep them under the carpet or dodge them, disregard them, set them aside. May we read them. We're responsible for them. Help the pastors and the teachers and the ministers. Help us all to humble ourselves to the word of God, Lord, and you will bring your word to pass, Lord, because it, who would think that we would be under this condition right now, that the world would be under this snare of this epidemic, this virus. Who would, who would believe that? Who would know? Caught the people unaware. It's incredible. It would be hard to believe. But, Lord, it has happened before us, and so will this happen. So will these things that we're waiting for. It will be incredible to the world. It's always got to be that way. It's got to be incredible. It's got to be unbelievable. But it's the test. What will we do? Listen to the church or listen to Christ the word? Lord, help us to listen to your word, to the spirit, to the Holy Ghost. Let us be led by the spirit of God, Lord. I pray you be with your children. You bless them, Lord. You, you help them. You, you strengthen them. May you drive them to look into the word, to stay in that word. Father, Lord Jesus, until Jesus comes to take us away. Go with your people now, Lord, and we will return again in 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. for the evening service. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Amen. You are dismissed, and the Lord be with you this afternoon and the rest of the day. And uh, I'll try to be back here at 5 o'clock. Amen. And I uh, to continue on with this great subject. Amen. Because it's exciting. For me, it's a, it's exciting. It's a, a thrilling time. And I believe that it's stimulating to the believer and it gives us comfort and it gives us strength and it reminds us of how we must stand in this dark time. Amen. So God bless you. Amen.